Hey guys, what's up? Child the Gamer here, and I am with a friend of mine here um, discussing about the new Card Fight Vanguard V series, which is the reboot crisis. Hey everyone, Shun over here, and as Chad said, I'm here to talk about the current VR prices of the current Vanguard V series reboot. So, let's start it off. What are your thoughts, Chad? Well, seeing seeing the reboot so far, I'm I'm really liking the new like the force mechanic and all that. But but as for the prices. Yeah, you know, me and Shinova here, we've been, we looked, not even yesterday, I, actually, just yesterday, which is why we wanted to make this video. You should have seen the prices we saw yesterday, because some of these were like $43, and $50, and sometimes higher, but today, we, we went on, not even kidding, there's a lot more sellers, thanks, thanks to the, um, I think a bunch of people got their sneak peek kits or whatnot, and mm -hmm. the prices drastically dropped. Like for example, <clears throat> King of Knights outfit here was forty three dollar, was forty two ninety nine, pretty much forty three dollars. He dropped to pretty much thirty ninety nine cents shipping, which is pretty much his estimated thirty one dollars. Twelve dollar drop. On Alfred himself, which is a big shock. It's like, wow. Just imagine him so release day. Yeah, I mean, this is pre release prices. This is just yep. for the pre release. Whew. And, and another one that really shocked me, which I didn't show Shinova yet. Look at the price drop for Dragonic Waterfall. He dropped by Ooh. about half. He was 50 yesterday. He's about 25 to 26 dollars today. That's in one day, keep in mind. Yeah, I just still don't think it's fair that people should shell out a hundred dollars for a playset. Uh... Hey, you want what's funny? This is just the pre-release prices, the sneak peek prices. The oh, insane, yeah, but... yeah, the insane prices you and I saw before were the pre-order prices, which were way too high. Mm-hmm. And oh my! But like, <sighs> yeah, you're saying. I was saying, I really want Vanguard to succeed, and the reboot is in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But I yeah. just hope these prices become more affordable for like new players. Like I myself have been playing Vanguard for seven, almost eight years. Same. And I've seen, and I've seen how crazy the prices can get. Mostly mentioning the Amnesty Messiah and Chrono Dragon Next Stage fiasco. Along with the new Chaos Breaker stuff, that those prices are still burned into my noggin as we speak. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I agree with that statement. In fact, in fact, it, it's just like it's just like the sudden, you know, like I mean, not to get off topic here, but it's part of a topic we're talking about, like this, these crazy prices, like um, like for example, with Asha. She barely got any hype prices, barely. Only her strides did, like um, her dream spinning was up to I think maximum $25, $30 maximum. And then her glorious bloom, which came out in set 6 of GBT06, which was... <sighs> I'm not surprised that she was that high, because she was hard to pull. But dang, when I was trying to get her back then, Ridiculous. Yeah. She, yeah, she was like, I think, 60 to 80 a pop. Mm -hmm. that's, well, that's because she was hard to pull back then. And same with Transcending Ultimile. 
his other stride too, so wow. Yeah, they were really, really hard to pull. And I felt bad for anyone trying to get a hold of the next age. Oh yeah, but still, Bushy Road made a reprint of it in Gears of Fate, which was definitely needed. Yeah. They definitely made a reprint of Amnesty in GBT-08, so... Yeah. E yeah, And but... plus they stopped giving Messiahs the GR treatment in boxes, which I'm eternally grateful for. Yeah. It, and, and, and enough of going off topic, because I think we went a little bit too far off there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but <laughs> it, it's all good points, because we needed to talk about that big time, because a lot of people need to know. <clears throat> and keep in mind, guys, if you see someone trying to sell this for like 50, don't get it. They're the, pretty much the yeah. buyouts, which are the scalpers of... Of um, pretty much like card games, we call them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the buyout store. But like, I'll game. say this. I'll say this and I'll say this again. As Different Fright says, SPs are not necessities. Great trade fodder, great binder fodder, but they are not necessary. Exactly. If you got the chance to SP out a full deck, fine. Then do so. Exactly. But if they're not a 100% necessity, you don't need to have SPs. If you pull them, fantastic. If you if you get them from a friend, awesome. If you somehow win one in a contest or something, amazing. Great feelings. And trust me, mm -hmm. I know. I should know. It, it's the best feeling ever, especially pulling a GR. <sighs> yeah, and fun fact, I actually pulled one of those Oscars. The glorious bloom. So imagine how I felt. The only ever GR I've gotten was Dragon Masquerade Harry and Exelix Messiah. No joke. Nice. But, well, anyway, I think we should go on to the next VR. That's the main part of the mm -hmm. U19Q4 set. The one that yep. Nova here is excited for, and I'm excited for. I got my deck list already written out, it's just a matter of affording the deck. Imperial Daughter. Yep, the one Misaki uses. Yay! I adore Misaki. And the fact, you know, when me and Shinova here were looking at prices yesterday, she, not even kidding, was $43.99. She's pretty much $44. And look at the price now. 32 plus 99 cents. Pretty much she dropped in price about eleven dollars. Mm -hmm. And this guys, keep in mind, this is sneak peek prices. This isn't even release day. Imagine on release day. I don't know if it's gonna raise or it's gonna go down. We're going to find out, though. I'm hoping it'll go down, but I just hope that Imperial Daughter and Draconic Waterfall, this is kind of wishful thinking. <laughs> I hope they go down to like 11 or 12 bucks a pop. I mean, <laughs> I know they're the highest rarity, but you also have to keep in mind that I think there's five BRs per case. Yeah, 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 I mean, I heard there's supposed to be like one VR per box, but we'll find out the ratios in English because, because, because I personally don't know. If any of you guys know, please let us know in the comments, okay? Tell us the ratios if you went to Sneak Peek or if you pulled Sneak Peek kits yourself. Or if you pulled maybe Japanese boxes. Just let us know. Let us know the ratio. So that way we can have it accurately. Because I have no open box, and I'm probably not getting the box for a little while here, because saving up for some other stuff. And mainly, I just buy singles, or I'll just trade for singles I need, since yeah. I'm only one player. Now, if I lived with another person who played Vanguard, then I'd see more of a necessity of buying a box or a couple. 
I just like opening the packs up. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's it. It's just a good feeling, especially when you pull one of these. It's probably one of the best feelings of um, opening card packs. It's like, yes, I got this card. Yeah. <laughs> just if you ever get any imperial daughters, send them my way. Yeah, definitely send them his way. And for me, I don't know what I'm going for. Uh, I mean, I'm probably just going to stick with them, like, a maybe going for this guy, R Perfect Riser. And guys... Well, he's still a good unit. Oh yeah, he's great. And guys, keep in mind, like I said, me and Snover were looking at price last night. This guy was almost 39 bucks. Now he's 20, almost 25. Sneak peek price. Not even set release. And this makes me happy because this is one of my favorite units. Besides the Shura Kaiser, of course. Oh, yeah. I and, mean, like, wait. my question about this is... Hmm. Since with the reboot, do you think Bushiroad's going to be on a more consistent listening and reprint schedule? Most likely. I mean, they're really good with that, especially in Future Car Buddy Fights. Okay. Yeah, Future Car Buddy Fight, they're good about that. And they're good so about... So you think they're going to produce... Oh. Yeah, I'm just going to say one thing. So... They're good about listening to fans, too. Unlike a certain other company okay. at... <clears throat> Konami. <clears throat> Sorry. Hmm. Yeah, I had to get that out there. <laughs> I think a lot of people will agree with me on that term. Mm, yeah. I said something else, but yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we could say something else, but we'll, I'll save that for another time. Anyway. Yeah, so far I'm really liking these VRs and the fact that the prices are this... I mean, nice for a sneak peek. But, like I said before, maybe the price is still down here. Uh, let's look. Yeah, there it is. Right there. And they still had four. Looks like they didn't sell any. And they probably sold a bunch from this place because there's only one left. <laughs> well, I mean, let's see. Ideal Pro has 31 of them available. They probably bought at least a, ca a few cases. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, still, selling it for this price is not bad. I mean, twenty four ninety nine, pretty much about twenty five, twenty six bucks. It's not bad at all, especially for a sneak peek price of this magnitude. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at that. And this art is even cooler. I thought he couldn't get any cooler, and look at that. He's a beast! And... Like, the three decks I'm gonna... Hmm? Oh, yeah. The three decks I'm gonna build for the Beast series... Is gonna be Aqua Force whenever it comes out. OTT. And Dimension Police. Yep. Aqua Force, um, is getting a trial deck... Um, in August towards the end of August, actually. Sad face. Ooh. Makes you think... Yeah. Makes you think if OTT's gonna get a trial deck in the reboot as well. Hopefully it's based on Sakuya. She was the yeah. original OTT trial deck that I loved back then. In fact, I wanted to see them make a new Sakuya trial deck. Brand new. <laughs> I, I want it to happen, because, like I said, that was one of my all-time favorite trial decks next to Awesome. Number two. Hmm. That's saying something. When you're number two to Asa, you know you've done good. <laughs> In my book. I mean, I mean, her skill is fun to, to you, know, you know, like, return your rear guards back to your hand, pretty much giving you, um, 
you know, just in case, like, um, you're up against, like, Mega Colony or something and the Paralyzed can't move, you can just return to hand and recall them. And it activated when you played around Vanguard Circle. Mm -hmm. Which, please, Bushiro, give us a new Socklea. Please. And please, Bushiro, I know you may not be listening, but please reprint boss cards that seem to be hard to get for new players. Please get on a more consistent reprint schedule. Especially Perfect Rising. I mean, they've done it before. Yeah, especially... Well, yeah, but like... Like, for example... Get on a consistent reprint schedule for like grabbing this. essential grade 3 bosses. Like this. Imperial Dogger. Perfect Riser, which in the past, dude, they actually did that, which is cool. So we might see him. Maybe with different art, even. Maybe. I'd be fine with that. And Waterfall, that would be nice. And, of course, Alfred, I know for a fact, is gonna get other arts later. I know that for a fact, because I know Bushy, though. Hopefully. <clears throat> okay, since we talked about the VRs, how about we talk about something else? Yeah. Yep, and you know what I'm talking about, and a lot of you who know the reboot know what I'm talking about. Anyway, here we are, guys. We're at the SVRs, which, like we said, it's not a necessity to get the SVRs. You don't have to have them, but they're, it's nice for your collection. And if you can pull one, excellent. If not, oh well. It's not a must, you know? We don't have to have yeah, them. It's just it's just, I want these BRs to be affordable to everybody, not just to anyone who has the money. Yeah. Like, I want this reboot of Vanguard to be affordable for everyone. Keep the skills on triggers simple. Completely eradicate the idea of Persona Crits in the V series. I mean, yeah. still, look at Stealth Dragon Moroar. He's like 15 to 16 bucks a pop still. I think so. In the G... And the G format is pretty much almost over. It's going to be over in October, I think. Yeah, October. So, <laughs> How funny. Yeah. That's the same month that um, Super Mario Party comes out. Oh. <laughs> and Mega Man 11. It does look nice, but... <laughs> huh. I'm right. just... I can't wait to get my hands on the Spyro Reignited Trilogy, so that's going to be pretty amazing. <laughs> Same. Sorry we're going off topic, guys, but once we miss in October, a lot of good games are coming out in October. Which is unusual, because yeah, mostly Chr they're in November. Chrono Trigger Remake. Make it happen. <laughs> like HD. Yes. I pay, I pay good money for that. Hey, if um, by any chance the creators of Chrono Trigger are watching this, which I doubt you are, but if you are, please make an HD remake. I will buy it. Okay, I, th I think that's HD this is collection of both Chrono... Hmm? HD collection of Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross together. Yep, yep. But anyway, enough going off topic. Alright. Now we're going to go talk about the, um, let's see, what's else going Oh, the prices of the draw symbols, of course. Yeah. Yeah, you see, guys, for those who didn't know, the draw sentinels are draw triggers that act that are also perfect guards. Instead of relying on grade ones for perfect guards, which um the trial deck some still have them, grade one perfect guards, there's an alternative to make the draw triggers all the perfect guards. Like for example, Flash Shield Assault was the original Royal Paladin Perfect Guard. And now she's a draw trigger too. And they're all double off. And plus, if you invest in the per Perfect Draw Sentinels, or I should say Perfect Draws, you have yeah, more yeah, it's of called a chance perfect of checking in something else at four. Yeah. 
So like you could probably tech in for Little Sage Marin from exactly. the B series into your deck and then splash in the four perfect draw sentinels. On top of that, you probably have more of a chance of check drawing into another perfect draw to save yourself from any oncoming assaults from the other player. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and guys, keep in mind, <clears throat> this was $11 last night, and now it's five ninety five today. And I'm okay with this price. I'm okay with this price since it's a double R. Yeah, double R. Double R should be this range price, you know? And also, <clears throat> for those of you who are nostalgic of Card 5 Vanguard, the draw trigger is good old Wyvern Guard Bari. Yeah, for Kagura. And look, that's nice. I remember when his original PG was like 13 a pop. Yeah, I remember. Now he's like 545 for the draw. Perfect draw. Yeah, let's call them perfect draws. Yep. That's a good name. Yeah. Okay, I like it. We'll use that. <laughs> Yeah, there's Bari, and for Oracle Think Tank, of course, we got good old Miss Miss, which she was normally a grade 1, that that perfect guardian against grade 1s or 2s, not 3s and 4s. But, they went and upgraded her to a perfect draw, making her a sentinel for once, which is awesome. And I was actually hoping, I was, I was actually like... I'm like, why isn't Miss Miss the perfect guard herself? That would be great. And Bushy was like, hey, we're listening. Make her a perfect draw. I was really hoping that Battle Sisters would get the perfect draw art, because I just love Battle Sister Chocolat art. Yeah, but this gives Miss Miss some love, though. And who knows? Oh, yeah. We're probably going to see more perfect draws in the future. Probably. You know, we'll probably see Ch Chocolat later. I mean, who knows? And have you noticed we haven't even seen one Battle Sister in the set? Not They one. better make them amazing. They're probably just gonna wait until later in the reboot and they're gonna give us a bunch of Battle Sisters. Mm. I like the sound of that. Yeah, you know, do what they did with the balances, like, like you know, they made the whole set based on the original Oracle Think Tanks. Just about that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I would love if they did that with a new reboot. I would love it. And yes, the draw oh. sentinel for that has to be Chocolat. Well, it's just here's the thing: OTT is under the protect marker. But yeah. honestly, for some strange reason, I, I could see Battle Sisters under the Excel marker for some strange reason. Well, but we're gonna find out. Don't your pitchforks and torches at me just yet. So. I mean, we'll find out. We'll find out later on in the series if the clans are gonna get other gift markers. Like the subtypes, for example. Which would be nice. Speaking of subtypes and stuff, Nova Grappler. I just hope. Good old twin blader. Mm. Look at his price, I just guys. Hope that. Yeah, but back on the archetype thing, I just hope that some grade three bosses don't get a dual gift option down the road. I know that's kind of scary, but that's what I don't want to see happen. Well, we'll find out as we go into the reboot because, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do, but whatever they do, they know what they're doing. We'll find out. And I'm going to say that Link Joker is probably going to be under the Protect clan as well. I mean, I think Darker Regulars is in there too. Maybe. Oh. We'll, we'll talk more about, you know, like the whole like, gift marker what we think we're going to be part of later, you know, once we know more. <laughs> because we're just guessing right now. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we're just like... Yeah, it's just it, pure speculation. Pure speculation, yeah, because we don't know. We'll find out. Okay, next... Ooh. 
Okay, here's an interesting topic we gotta talk about. The pre-order pricing. The greediness mm -hmm. of them, to be specific. Pretty much buyouts we're talking about. Like, for example, let me show you guys, the, like I said earlier, here's the pre-order pricing, 50 bucks, and look at the sneak peek price from other shops, 25, yeah. If this is a topic I know is pretty sensitive, I know this. I usually don't like to bring it up, but we gotta bring it up right now. You have any word on this, Nover? Well, it's just... I really don't like it when sellers... I'm not gonna name names, but I'm just gonna say this. I really don't like it when sellers try to spike up the prices when it's pre-order season and then they just end up jogging down to a much more reasonable price if you put something up at a high price like they did with Imperial Daughter you're just scaring your customers away <laughs> yeah that yeah and you know that a lot so a lot and I should know myself yeah. I mean I mean heck but that's why I tried to get back, you know, an Asha when, you know, you guys all, like, saw the video about what happened to my Asha deck. I tried to get back into her, then they spiked up the price for no good reason. That's why I haven't been going for Asha lately. Because I couldn't. Cool. I can't afford, like, $35 for a triple R. That's, that's robbery. I can't either. It's like, I'm sorry, guys. I can't guys, either, and you're talking... Yeah. And you're talking to a guy who also plays Vanguard and Magic the Gathering, so... <laughs> Food for thought, I like to play Popper. <laughs> yeah, play budget builds, that's the best way to go for... I mean, I mean, in Vanguard, you can actually play a budget build and be just fine. You don't have to go, like, oh, yeah. crazy with, like, you know, like, prices or really hard cards. You don't have to to have fun in the game but you know you know I mean I mean for us who wanted like a you know like us casual like players like awesome players for example who wanted the blue awesome for a reasonable price if you ask me her reasonable price would be under ten dollars because she is not 35 words I'm sorry as much as I love awesome no And this is coming from I'm the, the biggest Oscar awesome fan around. Yeah, and speaking of grade 3 price hikes, I'm still surprised that the Alter Ego Messiah SP is probably like 45 to 50 bucks. For the SP, though. I just wonder. Yeah. Hmm. Wait, should we look that real quick? Go ahead, because like the last time I checked, he was like 45 to 50. <laughs> hey guys, you're about to watch me search for another card, though. Okay. <laughs> Alter Ego Messiah SP. You're talking about original, right? Yes. Okay. Just making sure if that was that or the Neo. Because Neo is awesome. Alright, let's see how much the SP is for. Oh, it's still saying it. Huh? Holy Mother of Moses. Am I reading this right? Uh... Well, my... My mind's blown for the night. <laughs> what? Guys, our minds are both blown. For the longest time, it's like 40, 45 bucks for an SP. And it was higher than that on release day. I don't understand. You would think that this SP would be 
Oh wow, look at the other SPs. Wow. I am... My mind. I'm shocked. <laughs> it's just like the little thing back in the, our other video where we were talking about and we saw Big Crunch. Hang on, hang on. Go back down to the price fluctuator for a second. Price fluctuator? Oh, you mean down here? Yeah, the... Yeah, the market price versus... No, go back up. Oh, oh, right here. Yeah, market price was 40, almost 45 bucks. So that was right. But now they're selling for like eight dollars. Wow. Hmm. Well, if you want to get your SP, get them now. <laughs> yeah, you want SP Ultra Eagle Messiahs? Pick them up while you still can. Because there's two left. I'm good here. with my trial deck ones. Yep. Yeah. I'm good with my trial deck ones. It works yeah. the same. Yeah. It's just, I mean, if you can afford these with. With a lot left, go by all means pick it up if you want to. I mean, it's all based on the player. Exactly. If you like to collect SPs, go ahead and collect them. Just don't try to break your own bank, okay? Just to fair yeah. warning to you guys, I'm just I'm just watching out for you. That's all I'm doing. I'm not telling you how to spend your money and stuff. I'm just warning you. Just be careful. If you pull one of these out of a pack, fantastic. If you don't, oh well, it's okay. It's like, hey, they all work the same. Mm -hmm. Anyway, wow, I think, um, okay. <clears throat> okay, and here's the topic. I think you should take over this one, Snover, about how sellers should, um, what sellers should do to keep their customers interested in the game. Well, when I used to sell cards, I would put them at a fair and affordable price. Like, when Mythic Beast Fenrir was originally running around, he was like, what, 20 to... 30. 25 bucks? 20, yeah, 25, 20, 25. Yeah, I would sell him for 12 for shipping. That way I knew I was going to get a customer, and I, I knew I was putting myself at a loss, but I just wanted the Fenrir to go to a good home. That's exactly why I do some of my cards. I mean, you know, I look at some of the cards myself, and, and you know, if I, if I saw that someone, you know, wanted it and couldn't afford it, I'd be like, you know what, I'm going to cut the price down more than half, that way these people can afford it, and it'll be, like you said, in a good home. However, if it was like an SP, like the time where I pulled the Dark Side Mirror Master SP, I sold it for 54 bucks. I mean, people pay so. that. Because that yeah. SP, let's face it, that was one of the harder to get perfect guard SPs. Yeah, she was, if not the hardest to get. I should know. Back when I went to the shop, I haven't heard of one person who pulled her SP. She not was pretty rare as an SP. Oh, yeah. She was one of the rarest. That and I think Cosmo Reef for Link Joker. Oh, yeah. Cosmo Reef did have an SPR. Ugh. I shudder to think of that price back then. I didn't even check back then. All I remember is that Cosmo Reef is average 25 30 bucks. That's all I remember. For the regular? Yeah, for, for the, the regular? regular? Regular back then, yeah. Shoot. You know, I mean back on release day. And for like, I think like a month mm -hmm. after that. I think it went down to 20 <laughs> eventually. Man, I remember when GBT03 was the hotness for the Messiahs. <laughs> Yeah, especially oh, when you man. know who was in it. And the scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, speaking of GBT03, have you guys noticed the little combo with Heavy Material Dragon and Globule Dober? Mm -hmm. Oh, 
to three cards to hand when you activate his both of their skills. Like you activate a heavy material yeah. skill first, draw two. Yeah. And then Dover unlocks, you draw one. So you and draw then counter three charge cards. one. Soul blast. Yep, you get yep. three. three Before charge. your triple drive check. Yeah. Yeah. And anyway, I think we've gotten we've talked about like all that, you know. I think we can um, like um say that for another time, but yeah. Is there anything else we should cover? Oh, yeah. Well, it's just we should make aware to Bushy Road why reprinting cards at a consistent rate is important. Yeah, yeah. I think I should um begin this one. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Yeah, Bushy Road, if you are by chance watching this video, you guys need to make like a consistent reprint of certain like Shinova here said, boss cards, grade threes, like Imperial Daughter, King of Knights Alfred, Perfect Riser, and also um Draconic Waterfall and stuff like that, you know? You know, it's like make them to where they can be affordable for new players to get a hold of, and to not just be the people who have a ton of money, but make it accessible to a lot of people, and you'll be bringing in a humongous crowd then. I mean, huge. In fact, in fact, the reason I'm making these videos is so I can spread the word of how fun Vanguard is, so people can play the game and just be like, Oh, you know what? This act game actually looks good. I want to try it. Or, oh, I really like the looks of this anime. I'm going to go watch it. Mm -hmm. I've had I really people do tell enjoy me that how too. the reboot anime turned out. Yeah, I've had people tell me that thank me for introducing them to it. And I said, I said, oh, no problem. In fact, if you want to watch the reboot with me, Go ahead and watch it with me. It's like, that's what this is about. It's like, bringing more people in, building up the community. Getting everybody interested. You know, I mean, I know some people won't want to, you know, watch or play it, but... That's them. That's fine. It's like, it's like, guys, if, if you're not interested in this game at all, that's okay. You don't have to play it. We're just telling you how much fun we have with it. And we're, and we're here to warn you, uh, you know, like, about, like, the prices to be careful of what you buy. Like I said, that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you think we should actually end it off here? Yeah, sure. Yeah, did you have anything else you wanted to add real quick? Well, it's just, let me say this. If you're ever at a period where you're losing a lot of games at Vanguard, losses happen, but don't let that get you discouraged. You just gotta keep going and try again. Yeah. If something knocks you down, pull yourself back up, try again. Yeah, like my um, video about winning isn't everything. Yeah, I that I explained that in that video. It's like it's like it doesn't matter how much we win or lose, it's about having fun playing the game. So if you're all discouraged about about losses, feel free to leave comments or talk to me. You know? Talk to me and Shin over here. We'll be more than glad to talk yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, we don't bite. Yeah, yeah, I mean I mean leave comments. Go ahead guys. Let's all discuss. And if if any of you are interested in, in playing this game or learning more about it, I will be making more videos about it. And heck, I'm even going to do reviews of Buddy Fight even, based on the characters. So, also look forward to that. Well, I gotta go here, Chad, but it's yeah. been nice collaborating with you tonight. Yeah, I think I gotta get going too, so that way we can get this video posted up so everyone can see. Alright. Yep. Alright, guys, and Snover, thanks for joining me again. Hey, anytime. Alright, this has been Chad the Gamer.
and Schoonover. And we're signing out. Have a good night, everybody. God bless you all, and have a wonderful day. I hope you all have an awesome day, everybody. Later, guys.